when you take exogenous ketone, you are sending signal to the liver to lower gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is a process of making sugar okay. from other sources like glutamate from, you know, fats and proteins and all that. That is especially true when you are on ketogenic diet or okay. when you're fasting because either way, even when you're on low glucose, you measure your blood glucose, you'll still have a baseline. You'll still have about four or five millimolar, okay. right? Where does that glucose come from? You're not eating right. sugar. So it's, it's from gluconeogenesis. I was just going to say. It's yeah. So stored. gluconeogenesis also happens at all times, even when you eating sugar. Okay. So your body balances it, right? It balances it by saying, okay, these are the external sugar. I'm going to use it. But at the same time, it's a flux. It's a balance of you producing your own sugar. Same with fat. When you take in fat, it's, it does not just go into your muscles and get used, right? It gets right. repackaged. It gets redistributed into the body and churn it around, right? right? So this is what they hypothesize. When you have exogenous ketones, you're lowering that glucose production in your liver and therefore it reduces the overall blood glucose glucose level. Okay. But that also shows that your body perceive ketones as a energy source that you have plenty that ah. you don't need to produce the glucose anymore, okay. right? So that's the main point here. Exogenous ketone and endogenous ketones, while it is a little bit different in nature because you're not producing yourself, ultimately the molecule is the same. So your body will still recognize it as ketones. BHB is BHB okay. is BHB. It's not a novel magic molecule that a pharmaceutical company whips up right. from a genetic molecule modified organisms, it is literally the same exact molecule that your body would produce. So a big challenge that I see with a lot of fasters is that when they eat dinner, their glucose goes up and then they go to bed and somewhere around two to three in the morning, all of a sudden the blood sugar dipped so much that it causes this, I mean, it's the dawn effect, right? The liver secretes a bunch of glucose into the system in order to be able to, you know, regulate itself. They wake up at two or three in the morning, they get it the next Next, you know, when they actually wake up and get out of bed in the morning, they look at their glucose and they're like, oh my God, it's higher than it was before I went to bed. So if that theory you're talking about is right, could we use exogenous ketones before we go to bed to stop that two to three wake up that the liver does? Because now the liver ha has a sensor that uh, it tells it you don't need to- I can literally show you my glucose data right now. Like when I'm like asleep, like it literally flattens out. Oh, so it, you don't even, when you're sleeping, it doesn't even have like spikes up and down like no. we typically see. Have you tested it on like your aura ring? I have, yes. It hasn't shown an improvement. I mean, we tried doing it in a study as well to look at HRV and all that. Mm -hmm. Sleep quality wise, we are still a bit far from being able to test how effective it is. But in terms of blood glucose levels, yes, yes. So we we know that it flattens out when you sleep. And so two new places that I've never ever thought to use ketones that you've really expanded. Well, I think I have more than two, but right now in this moment, I have yes. two which is before bed for sleep, which I just want to tell you for menopausal women, that would be a game changer because mm. as we lose progesterone, we also don't go into as deep of a sleep. And then after a meal. After a meal, yeah. To bring down glucose. Yeah. So then my brain goes to because I and, love And then the interesting thing, the another way you can check is when you work out, like halfway into the workout, into the end of the workout, you'll see your glucose go up a little bit because your body starts sending signals to say that, hey, you are doing something physically demanding, therefore creates more glucose, right? right? But when you have ketones as a pre-workout, you don't see that spike. Oh, okay. But you have energy. Okay, so, but as a pre-workout, um, if I've got ketones in there, I'm not going to get as much release of sugar out of the muscles. And maybe I want to like show more definition. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want the release of muscle, of glucose so that it breaks down fat. Do we have any research on like what it does as far as muscle, maintaining muscle, as far as, you know, leaning muscle out. So there is a study that looked at another form of exogenous ketone, acetoacetic diester. They looked at cachexia, so muscle right. loss due to cancer. And they shown that ketones actually help retain muscle. Yeah. And we know oh. that from a recovery point of view, there is a study that looked at having ketones together with protein and carbs after a workout. And they looked at it from in vitro point of view, looking at biopsies of muscles, they actually upregulate the leucine mediated mTOR activation. And that is essential for protein synthesis, which is also essential for recovery. Wow. So if I'm going on a three day water fast and I don't want to lose a lot of muscle, then take, taking exogenous some exogenous ketones is preserving that muscle. Correct. That's and crazy. a lot of people ask the question, will I bring my fast because it contains 70 calories? Right. And Cynthia Thurlow and myself, we talked about this on our podcast, is that 
when you are fasting, when you go in a water fast, what kickstart ketogenesis, right? The ketone production. It's when you're low on sugar, mm-hmm. when you're low on insulin, mm-hmm. right? And you're starving yourself and therefore your body kickstarts the ketogenesis. When you have 70 calories of ketones, it doesn't increase your glucose level. It doesn't increase your insulin level. Mm. There is no reason to believe that you won't kickstart your ketogenesis. But also this brings back to the conversation of Walter Longo's study. I was study. just going to say, Walter Longo uh, study. Walter taught uh, us some fast- things there. Fast mimicking diet, they are giving these participants 500 to 750 calories yeah. worth of food and they can still mimic the effect of water fast. Yeah, so yeah. 70 calories is nothing. No. You'd have to have 10 of those in a day. 10 of yeah. those. And also acutely what they have seen in animal models is that when you take exogenous ketones, you are upregulating all the transporters, enzymes, which are relevant to right. keto metabolism, which means when this is transient, after six hours, it goes back down to baseline. You are now now tapping back into your own endogenous ketones, you have upregulation of all these different enzymes that's needed for keto metabolism. So you are primed and ready to burn more ketones from your own body. Oh my God. Now you have me thinking like, well, why would you fast without exogenous ketones? Like you, you like it's next level. It's next level. Okay, so then where would we use this for like Alzheimer's, dementia? I hope everybody listening knows how I'm going at this from menopause and women now. And I hope people take this seriously and try it with like fertility and things like that. But let's talk yeah, about- I would love to find out more about that because yeah. that's not my area of expertise. And I know a lot of our audience are also women who are interested in metabolic health, especially, yeah. you know, as we are aging, we know that all these different risks um, and all these different foods that we're eating yeah. that putting us at risk, right? Yeah. So I would love to hear more, uh, you know, do you experiment with it? And, yeah. and really like real life examples, uh, real life cases, what's going to move the needle? What's going to do it? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll put the links to your products in there. So people listening, please. Cases, what's going to move the needle? What's going to do it? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll put the links to your products in there. So people listening, please go try this and see because fertility is expensive yep. and it's, you know, breaks people's hearts. Yeah. And yet the the body was meant to reproduce. So if there's an issue where the body's not able to reproduce, then we got to fix that. And it's coming back to a molecule that's as innate in our body as our blood right. is a ketone. And yet the world, half the world is not even getting the ketones. Disclaimer though, it does not taste like soda. It does not taste yeah. like juice. Right, we yeah. are working on the flavor, yeah. but know this: the reason why we are surviving and thriving is because when people take it, they feel the subjective yeah. difference. And regardless of the taste, that like people are taking it for the benefit. Yeah. And what's very very funny is that most people that have been taking it long term now, they're like, actually, I don't mind the taste. Yeah, you get used to it. Yeah. yeah, that I can totally see that. Yeah, you know what I always say when you like take a shot of something that's healthy, and you're like, oh, I hate that. I'm never gonna do that. I always think, well, what did you do in college when you're at a bar and like they gave you like a, exactly you, know, a you take it for the effect yeah, like you didn't just you didn't go oh i don't like that you're like give it to me i want to <laughs> feel good i want the effect of it so that's, just that's look a great, at it that's a great example that's look, a great analogy yeah, it's like, it like what that. did you think when you were you right. know what were you thinking what would you tell your 21 year old self yeah so. so now now we're talking about therapeutic users yes right because yes. thank you, you know sir. like what we're saying everything that uses your brain every activity that uses your brain you can benefit from having ketones in your body i don't care whether whether you're on mm. a ketogenic diet or fasting or exogenous ketones. 